Now, let me go to Owen Curry, who joins me from uh, Air and Travel magazine, uh, because I'm really interested, because as of 4 o'clock uh, a.m. this morning, uh, the new quarantine uh, situation has come into force here. And uh, Owen, is there any way that we can monitor this or any way that we can know that uh, people are actually following the rules? I'm pretty much uh, sure there's no doubt people are following the rules, but the number of people uh, affected, I expect to be very small, Keith. Much of what has been uh, publicised about the event is about the 33 red list countries. I'll come back to that in a second. But I expect most of the usage for it would be for people who've arrived without a negative uh, PCR test in Dublin airport. What um, for some time now you've needed a negative PCR test to get onto an aircraft to come to Ireland. Uh, it's been quite controversial. We've heard people turning up at an airport in Rome, for instance, with the documentation or with the documentation on their phone and being refused boarding because the person at the check-in desk says that's not adequate. It's caused um, quite a little bit of a stir among the small number of passengers coming to Ireland. But we during January, and I haven't got more up-to-date figures, about 100 people arrived that had got through that process. I don't know how they did it, but they got on board an aircraft with no negative PCR. And that's more likely where the quarantine hotel is going to be used. If you arrive in Dublin, present in Dublin airport, off a flight without a negative PCR test, you're brought to the hotel and there you're quarantined until you get, not for the 14 days, but until you get the negative PCR test. Uh, it's more at likely your at your own cost. But that's more likely what will happen. It will, it's going to be at your own cost anyway, Keith. Um, you know, it, it, you people, the, the airline doesn't, or the health authorities don't supply the negative PCR test, although some countries have free testing. But most people are paying for their own before they fly to Ireland. Can I ask you, though, I mean, is it, I, mean, I know the military and you know, the army are involved in all of this, but from the knowledge that you have, you're closer, far closer than I could ever be to it. Um, but is it going to be military precision? So when you step off uh, the plane, are you going to be uh, accompanied to a waiting bus and brought? Uh, to, you said the numbers are going to be low, but are you going to be brought then to one of the typical hotels, say, and uh, that's when you start your quarantine from there? Um, you know, the military involvement has been played up a lot, as has the guard involvement. There's very little involvement there. Backup support involvement. The way the contract went, and it's not a nice, it's a, it's a messy enough contract from the hotelier point of view. Obviously, that's the sector I'd be very close to. Um, you, This hotel was asked to provide the transport and the security. Uh, that's a big deal because, as you know, hotels are all designed not uh, with the Shawshank Redemption in mind. They're designed with instant egress. Uh, you have to get out of a hotel quickly in term for an emergency with fire doors everywhere. So um, the hotel had to provide the extra security to keep people in effective detention, which is what uh, the legislation seems to set, be setting out for these people. The process is one of the few things we know. Um, the process is very simple. It's announced before you land that anyone who's come from a red list country stays on board while the rest of the passengers disembark. Then they're taken separately through the immigration process and they're brought to the, directly to the hotel. They're checked in and then normal sort of hotel rules apply. It's the equivalent of, you know, uh, being in your hotel room and having your room service, everything coming by room service and doing what people do in hotel rooms. They're not uncomfortable places. Um, what, uh, what would be different though is that, um, the uh, hotel key room, the, the, you normally get a room key. Apparently, they're not being given room keys. But you've got to remember, and this is something that hasn't shown up in the narrative, in the debate, is that a lot of Irish people have done quarantine in hotels. Since the start of this crisis, about 12,000 people have arrived in Ireland. They have not had a, f a family or a rental property or anything to go to. So they've chosen to do the self-isolation, which we all have to do since uh, March last. They've chosen to do that in a hotel, 12,000 of them, without incident. And it's worked fairly well. The hotels that did that are pretty good at it. They know what's required. People are required not to mix, much the same as we are experiencing under level five lockdown. And it works. Um, the whole uh, the, the whole palaver about mandatory hotel quarantine has been 
that um, people coming from, you know, high risk countries are somehow going to keep variants at bay or reduce the uh, spread of COVID within Ireland. You know, the cases, the HPSC, HPSC figures, Department of Health figures released only 20 minutes ago say that the grand total of imported cases in the country now is 57 out of 7,597. So, um, and right back, the cumulative is all the way back to the beginning is um, less than uh, less than 1% uh, imported. So we're actually making a big deal to, to try and solve our problem, keep, uh, reduce our cases or uh, keep new variants at bay. It will do neither. Mm. I would think um, from a quarantine point of view, the first maybe one, two or three days would be a novelty. But when it gets to day 12, I'd say you could be really cheesed off looking at the four walls of that room. And I take it that um, there'll be no cleaners coming in to clean the room and or otherwise you'll, you'll, you'll be there in your own home. Yeah, the cleaning process is another one that uh, the hotels will do. They leave their hotel room free for three days. Uh, then they do a complete clean, wipe down, hospital style, uh, complete uh, wipe down of the room. And then it's clear again. From the hotel point of view also, they cannot mix other guests. So you have um, you know, your entire hotel taken up by the Department of Health, uh, by the government. And while people are being charged, they're being charged for this 14 day mandatory quarantine, uh, the taxpayer is paying a very hefty bill. The number of security guards is going to be very high. They're all paid by the taxpayer. Uh, the army backup, all of that is probably coming. That would be paid anyway. And um, the, the, obviously a contract where they have to take out entire hotels to house these people is much more expensive than just um, taking out a, a, a floor of a room. It would. It's a bit difficult for a hotel because if they've existing business they have to relocate them a lot of airport hotels would still have business from air crews uh, people like that coming in to make my, the 33 countries uh, most people would know what they are now the two main ones are brazil and south africa in most a lot of south american a lot of uh, africa a lot of african countries on it but two very odd ones one is austria uh, the European C uh, CDC in, uh, released their map yesterday, which showed the positivity rate. Uh, one of the countries, one of the few countries below 4% is Ireland. Another is Austria. And yet Austria is on the red list. The most controversial of all, though, uh, Keith, is the United Arab Emirates. Uh, everyone coming from Dubai and Abu Dhabi with Emirates or Etihad, even if they've only been there for two hours, have to go into 14 day mandatory hotel quarantine. And it's, they're very big transfer airports. The only other Asian routes we have are Turkish through Istanbul and Qatar through Doha. So uh, Indian doctor, Indian uh, people, uh, Asian, any, everybody from the Asian side, they generally come, even from South Africa, they'll come through those. And the other, even pe people from Dubai, and remember, 75% uh, of the population of Dubai has been vaccinated at this stage. have got their second vaccine in most cases. People who are coming from Dubai having been vaccinated twice and presented their negative PCR test before the flight, because everybody has to do that anyway. Everybody arriving is, has presented a negative PCR test. So they are being told you must do the mandatory 14-day hotel quarantine, effective Shawshank redemption as well. It's going to cause a lot of problems for Emirates and Etihad. Um, bringing people over and they're not just passenger routes they are two of the most important uh, trade export flights to Asia from Ireland I could name about four Irish companies that will probably not succeed or probably go under may go under if the Emirates export outlet is uh, cut off to them and there's certainly uh, it's a it's a very dangerous situation for the for the connectivity of those flights, totally created by this mad notion that fourteen day mandatory quarantine will help tackle our COVID pro uh, problem, which it won't. People in cruise as well. Oh, and thanks for joining us. Uh, today. Always a pleasure, Kate. And uh, very good morning, Chet. That's on Curry joining us there. We are getting.